Hello everyone and welcome to Parasites and Health, our health education channel on YouTube. Having taught parasitology for more than two decades to both undergraduate and postgraduate level, I have realized the need to put my experiences together in video format such that my students, past, present and future can have something to fall back on. Again, the materials we'll find on parasites and health will cover such a wide range of topics that it will be found useful for students in the life sciences and medicine, as well as field workers in parasites, public and environmental health, and those that are looking for that additional knowledge to improve their lives. But talking about parasites, the entire concept of parasitism arose as a result of a relationship between two organisms. One is a parasite, the other one is the host. And by some kind of natural arrangement or co-evolution, it is meant that the parasite must depend on the host at some point in its life cycle, either completely or partially. And so as a result of that, it means that the activities of the parasite must affect the host in some way. So, a parasite that lives in a host does not have the intention of killing the host because if the host dies, it also dies. But, unavoidably, the activities of the parasite must affect the host. For instance, if it is a parasite that dwells completely in the host, we call them obligate parasite. It means that all the activities of the parasite will take place in the host. All the metabolic processes will be carried out in the host. And all the byproducts of metabolism of the parasite will be deposited in the host. So it is natural that the host must feel some negative impact of the presence of the parasite in its biological system. So as a result of these negative impacts, the host suffers some disability, sometimes leading to death. So, in classical medical parasitology, we recognize some organisms as parasites. We have the ones that are single-celled. We call them the protozoans. The protozoans are single-celled organisms. In the biological science, we know that life exists as a single cell and so the cell becomes the unit of life so as a single cell life can express its completeness and so there are parasites that exist just as a single cell for instance plasmodium the malaria parasite gadia lamblia entamoeba histolytica the trypanosomes the leishmanian organisms balantidium coli all these are single-celled organisms, they are parasites. Also, we have another group of parasites that are called helminths. These helminths are otherwise called worms. So under this, we have two broad categories. We have the round worms, which we call nematodes, and then we have the flat worms, which we call the platy helminths. So you can subdivide the platy helminths into cestodes or tapeworms and then trematodes or flukes. As for the roundworms or the nematodes, we can also subdivide them into those ones that are found in the gastrointestinal tract of man. We we'll call them the intestinal nematodes. We also have those that dwell in the tissue, so dwell in the blood muscle, connective tissues, under the skin, those ones are called the tissue nematodes. Usually, the intestinal nematodes are large in size, while the tissue nematodes are small. We're going to delve into their biology and medical importance, and in this we'll now be able to discover the real differences, the way they cause diseases, the way they affect man, because at the end of the day, you find that the activities of these parasites impact so much on man and his lifestyle. 
And you see that because of the complex interaction between the organisms, man, and his environment, humans suffer, animals suffer, the environment suffers. So, we talk about the platyhelminths or the tapeworms. Already I told you that we have the crematodes or the flukes, and then we have the cystodes or the tapeworms. These are all parasites that are found in man. We will talk about them in greater details. We also have arthropods that play a role and affect man's health in a negative way. Now, a study of these arthropods that either on their own are parasites or they play an active role in parasite transmission to animal and human hosts. They are called vectors. Now, among these vectors, some are insects, others are crustaceans, others are arachnids, and so their study constitutes what is known as entomology, the study of these vectors that either on their own are parasites or coexist with other parasites or transmit these parasites from host to host. Now, apart from the insects, we still have yet another group of organisms or other groups that are also parasites. We can classify them as the microparasites. Amongst these are the viruses, the bacteria, and then fungal organisms. Among the viruses, they cause diseases like yellow fever, West Nile virus fever, chikungunya fever, and a whole lot of other viral infections. Of course, including the novel COVID-19. We also have bacterial organisms that cause bacterial diseases. Example, salmonella species that cause the typhoid fevers. We also have mycobacterium, those that cause leprosy, mycobacterium leprae, or tuberculosis, mycobacterium tuberculosis. And of course, we also have those that cause fungal diseases. So, this is a rundown of the classes of parasites that we're going to come across in the course of this study. We will look at their role in man's affairs, how they affect man, how they affect his welfare, how they affect the environment. Because it is the activities of these parasites that bring about environmental degradation. Now, we'll also look at aspects of control of these parasites in the course of our series of lectures. We'll study how we can control these parasites, the approaches to getting them, either getting them under control or eliminating them entirely. For instance, we can use medication to suppress the parasites or to eliminate them from man's system. Or we can also use medication to prevent these parasites from invading man's organs or causing diseases. And when we so do, we call it chemoprophylaxis, that is using chemical substances to suppress or to prevent the invasion by parasites. Or we can use health education. We are going to dwell a lot on health education in the course of these lectures. Health education means equipping people with the knowledge of how to either avoid the parasite or eliminating it from their environment. But we are going to emphasize one approach that is the most economical and the most effective, and that is the integrated approach of parasite control. In this integrated approach, we combine chemotherapy, chemoprophylaxis, and health education. As part of health education, we'll be taught of how to take care of our environment. I will call it environmental sanitation because we know that these parasites dwell in the environment. And so when we take care of our environment, we take care of these parasites. So as you explore our channel, as you enjoy our lectures, please subscribe. And at the end of each lecture, don't fail to strike the bell. We are here to serve you and we hope that our series of lectures will improve your life, improve your environment, it will improve your health. I want to thank you at this point. Please once again subscribe to our channel and try the bell. 
Now we're going to have a comment section. Don't fail to visit our comment section and drop your comments, your views, your impressions, and your questions. We'll be very glad to take them because together we will facilitate and share knowledge. Thank you. I'll see you during the next lecture.